I recorded at this angle for the vlog the other day and I didn't mean to like it, but I do, so welcome to the new angle. Hello mate, it is January the 5th and um, yeah, uh, the New Year's blues has truly set in again. Um, so yeah, I've recorded this at night. I was meant to record it during the day, but I forgot. Um, so yeah, um, UCAS applications is something I've been doing in the last um, day and personal statement as well since the Christmas holidays, which is really important for university um so yeah that's what i'm doing and i'll um for norwich and bournemouth which are on completely opposite sides of reading so yeah should mean that by september i'll be at either one of those places i would prefer to go to bournemouth but norwich wouldn't be that bad so yeah so you've been referencing a lot of casey neistat um I don't really know a lot about the guy, except uh, a few months ago basically told anyone who was voting for Trump to <laughs> off. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not blaming him for it, but even though I would have voted Trump, but I'm not blaming him for it, because um, he has his opinions and uh, mine. It's a good thing you're taking inspiration uh, from YouTubers. Um, but yeah, um, if that was, was me, I would be saying anyone to, who wanted to vote for Jeremy Corbyn to <laughs> off as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you've got until 2020, so I don't think general election's going to... Uh, I don't think he's going to be there come next general election, but, yeah, it's all my opinion. And Reading FC, where do I think they will finish? Um, I think it'll be playoffs. I'm um, same as you. I'm going to say fifth. Um, we're doing pretty well, I'd say. We are, I'd say, at the Bristol City game, I was watching, not watching, I was on BBC um, Live Scores, and I was looking, I was like, oh god, 2-0 down. We did win, but, I mean, it's a bit hairy, loses nearly drawing against a side who's um, lower in the table, much lower in the table, and they're Bristol City. Bristol City. The worst team in the Championship, I'm a bar of them now, they're they're not in the relegation zone, but friggin' Wilbraham. He's like, what, 30, 3,700 years old, Tony Wilbraham, or whatever his name is. How did he score against us? Of course, though, the January window is now open, and I've seen rumours that Aubameyang is going to Shanghai for £138 million. <laughs> oh, man, if that goes through, I will be laughing my socks off. I don't know who's got the better deal, but... Oh well, my battery is running low on my camera. Wow, I didn't even realise. Um, so I saw I've got this wrap this vlog up. So basically, Matt, my question to you is, what moves do you think will happen in the January transfer window? And also, a Bamiyang for 138 mil. It's only a rumour, but if it's true, please laugh at the start of your next vlog if you think the same about it as I do. Right, I'm sorry about my battery being so low. Um, so I've sort of got to rush out the review. Um because I don't know how long I can record with low battery. So, yeah, it's going to be of the producers. I did. I said I forgot to review it at the end of last year, so here we go. New-ish review style for the producers. Right, the producers is a 1967 Mel Brooks comedy starring Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder. Um, and it is really, in my opinion, one of the first comedies that really shaped what um, they're like today. Sure you have comedies like um, uh, Some Like It Hot and obviously a few others that were released a bit earlier but I think it was the producers that really did shape them up for what they became today because you have Mel Brooks in a few years he made Young Frankenstein which then sort of inspired the Zucker Brothers um, and Jim Abrahams who then, you know, directed all the spoof movies, and that's, in my opinion, how comedy really started. Um, so this is a really important comedy. Right, the story is there is a producer um, who is always worried about his money. So he wants to get a surefire way to get money. So he hires an accountant, played by Gene Wilder, who tells him that the best way to get money 
is to create a surefire flop so the investors will lose their money and he will get a lot. So it's essentially a fraud movie and it's a really big criminal act because he actually gets the money of old ladies. <laughs> he sweets talks them into investing into his play and yeah, he basically tries to make a flop out of it. Um, it's really financial and um, there's not a lot of talk in the movie. It's really just how bad they can make this play and it is just such a good commentary on why some people make stuff really bad and it's also developed theories about like films like The Room and Batman and Robin which are so bad maybe the producers from this movie um, produced it. So um, that's a bit of a really complex-ish story but it's kind of um, goes along at the pace of how you'd expect a theatre production to be um, done. Um, so yeah, I, I saw like that. Not really a lot of focus on it. It just sort of lets the jokes come in, and they're they're really natural. It's all character based, and um, you have got obviously the um, producer Zero Mostel is really ambitious. Gene Wilder plays a really nervous about nervous about this. He feels guilty for coming up with the idea, but he just goes along with it because he's an easy um, yes yes man. Um, which is the complete opposite of Willy Wonka, but I'll take it. Still really good character, really good actor. Um, and then you have other um, characters like the director of the play, who's a really out there kind of guy, and then the main actor, um, who are oh, that audition scene is great. So, yeah, really characters help along with comedy a lot in a the movie. There was a great musical number near the end and I've got to say the ending and how it sort of backfires on the main characters it's just classic and it is really iconic comedy um, so yeah um, I would say maybe a couple of complaints is the story is probably a little bit too slow to start up um, and yeah sort of goes a little bit nowhere and it could be a little more focus on um, like the um, uh, rehearsals for the play um, rather than just having it as a main performance. But I will say though, the way it backfires on the main characters at the end is Mel Brooks doing what he does best, writing really um, great commentaries that um, are really funny, really thought-provoking, and not your average story. Um, I will say it is a very, very, very good movie. Right, so I'm not sure how long I can carry on recording, Matt, so I'll see you on Saturday.